Hi, my name is Mark Hoverson, and a couple years ago, I went to a used computer store with $250 and bought the most expensive computer I could afford, and from my kitchen table, started an online business. 14 months later, I had a $3.2 million business. The story is interesting. This is me on my way to work right now with my prized non-human companion, Luther. And so the kitchen table actually now turned into an old church that my family bought. And what I like about that is I always wanted a spacious, quaint office with some character. And this church totally provides that for me. The morning commute with Luther, the, the surge, the wind in my face, the oxygen, the focus on Luther and the leash, it, just the concentration required is a good adrenaline burst for the day because I usually start off interacting with my team right at the start of the day and I want to be at my best. Greetings friends, this is Mark Overson. Hope you are doing well. Today we're going to talk about the four hour work week. Is it a myth? Is it possible? It's a best selling book by Timothy Ferris and I want to give you some practical takeaways for how this book was really an instrumental moment in my life. You know, you wouldn't think this, but when we did start coming into money, I actually, my stress levels went a lot higher. I was dealing with a lot of people who had a lot of, a lot of dreams kind of riding on whether I was going to be able to, to deliver. And it got stressful, and so I just felt an urge. I needed an outlet, and so I hired a personal trainer we don't work that long, but he works me pretty hard. His big line is, uh, he walks in usually, we usually go on the hour and he says, you got a half an hour to kill me and then I'm leaving. And, uh, you know, he's pretty honest about it, but he, you know, he busts his butt for that half an hour. What makes a happy car? A clean car. A clean car. I heard a story about a rich farmer who had a lot of hired help, but he would put his kids in the field with the hired help to pick out the weeds for the crops and it kind of baffled the neighbors and the people because they would say well why are you having your kids work so hard when you when you got the money to pay somebody else and the farmer said I'm not raising corn I'm raising children and so for me my my poor kids we play a lot but these kids work hard Shani is my best friend and she's my wife, and that's a great combo to have. Early on in our marriage, we didn't, we didn't ever really go on a date because we couldn't afford a babysitter, we couldn't afford to go out to eat, we, we couldn't afford any of that kind of stuff. And so a friend of ours felt bad for us and said, I'll watch the kids. And then another friend of ours said, here's some money so you can go do something. I remember we sat down at this nice seafood restaurant and we actually, did not know what to say to each other because we had not been alone away from the kids. We were in a tiny little trailer with screaming kids. And the, the quality of life from then to now, it's, it's literally like a new life. I don't even know if he had a job when we first got married, but I was young and probably naive and I was just in love, so I didn't care. I trusted him enough to know that he would take care of me and our future family in it, so I wasn't worried about it. I knew whatever he did, he'd figure it out. To know Shannon is to like her. I mean, there's very few people who've ever met her that aren't endeared. For me, I don't know if it's ADD, I don't know if it's OCD, I don't know what it is, but I just don't like sitting in front of a computer for more than an hour at a time. And so we live right by a golf course, and so I started kind of taking up golf I wouldn't say I'm good, but I do like to drive around in a go-kart and smoke a cigar once in a while. But wait! Money. I do occasionally take a few phone calls on the golf course, much to the chidings of my friends, but I work with grassroots entrepreneurs and they really, they were right where I was at. Kitchen table, $250, not a lot of money, just a lot of hunger. and so. I spend a lot of time with them as well. Isaac is our firstborn. 
he was given a false positive for a disease that I can't even pronounce. They said it was going to take his life by the time he was five. Drink, drink. Oh, God. <laughs> when it came back a month later that that was a false positive, uh, just the gift of being a father was so salient in my mind. How about this? I'll sing a line, then you sing a line. I'll try to rhyme. Okay. We're on the canoe. We're climbing with the shoe. What are we gonna do? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, I'll try a new line. Okay. I was at a men's retreat and a father approached me and another dad with young kids and he said, you guys have young kids and the worst day of my life was dropping my kid off for college. When he stepped out of the car, I felt like I didn't even know him. And that conversation hit me and it fuels me every day to have time with my family. Being really involved with the internet, being kind of a semi-high profile person, you're always in the spotlight, you're always talking with people, you're always doing deals, you're always joint venturing, you're always working with new people. Luther is my complete non-human companion. He is, he's, you know, they have therapy dogs. That's the equivalent of Luther for me. Here's the story of a book, but not just any book. One day, three little kids, two brothers and a sister, were going to sleep. But the little boy said, he's named Rodney. Rodney. Some of my most precious memories are my dad with his shirt off and my head against his chest, just like Gracie there. And I remember that growing up. and. That's just a legacy I want to pass on. I see him. Give me five. That's all she wrote.